Hey guys, it's Faye from Solar Flow and I am back with a new video. Today is a special video because it is the first in hopefully a long series of videos, Sunday videos, which I'm going to call these Sunday specials because these are not necessarily topics that we would explore um, on our regular videos during the week, which is what's behind the veil. But these are videos that we can discuss and explore different topics related to raising our vibration and protecting our sacred life force energy. So this is questions that are starting to come up from you guys on um, as I am starting to ascend, how can I protect myself? How can I make sure that I'm not gonna be psychically attacked or I'm not going to um, be a vibrational match for a darker entity. So I'm just gonna share everything that I know on these Sunday videos that will help us all raise our vibration and protect our sacred life force energy. So today being the very first inaugural video, I thought what better topic to start on than crystals, which you may have noticed, I have some of my friends behind me. And um, even if you know a lot about crystals, you may still want to watch this because you may learn something that you didn't know before or something that's unexpected. I'm also going to discuss placement of particular crystals as well as proper ways in cleansing them and charging them. So I think it's gonna be a really interesting take on crystals, please stick around. And if not, I'll catch you at a different video, maybe even a different Sunday special. Okay, so let's dive right in. Crystals. Why do crystals work? Is it, do they work or is it a bunch of hogwash, right? And I love crystals. And I think the reason that I love crystals is specifically connected to the reason in which they work, which is that they work on a vibrational level. And just like, for example, getting out into nature really can help us clear our energy or clear stagnant energy that's in our body, getting outside, getting away from anything that's synthetic or man-made can really shift us and make us feel better is very much the same way and the same reason in which crystals do work, which is they come from nature. Yes, some of them are man-made, but for the most part, they are natural and they do work on a natural way the same way being in nature does so they definitely resonate with me but some things that i've also picked up along the way is in knowing for example the proper placement of crystals uh, around your home for example the proper use of crystals as well as if you want to wear crystals what are some of the ideal places to wear them and what are some of the ideal crystals to wear? So first of all, for example, as you may have um, heard me talk about in a previous video, um, which someone had asked if there was, uh, why they don't see me talking with my left hand only with my right hand. And that is because I am always holding in my left hand a particular crystal. And just like I hold a particular crystal in my left hand, I also wear a bunch of crystals on my left hand. And the reason that I choose to wear them on the left hand is that the left and right side of the body has different functions and purposes in terms of energy. So for example, the left hand is the feminine and receptive hand of the body. So it's the hand in which we want to receive with. So the crystals that I'm wearing on my left hand are specific to different energies that I want to be receiving at all times. And I actually had a friend who was spending a day with his family in Disneyland and he reached out and he's like, I'm feeling so dysregulated and I don't know what's going on with me. And I was like, okay, tell me what crystals are you wearing right now? And he gave me like a rundown on what was, what was he wearing on the left side. And I was like, what are you wearing on the right side? He's like, I'm not wearing anything. And I was like, you got to shift some to the right side. Because when you are in um, such a public place where there are so many diverse different energies that you're going to be exposed to, if you're wearing all of these crystals, 
crystal bracelets on the left side of your body, it's going to enhance whatever gifts and abilities you have. And if you're particularly sensitive to energy, it's going to flood your entire system with all of those different energies. So we kind of talked about like, okay, what are you wearing? Let's move some to the right side. And as soon as he had moved them to the right side of his body, he actually had reported feeling a lot more balanced and a lot more regulated. So I wanna make sure, first of all, that I'm always in a receptive and receiving mode, which is why I wear only, believe it or not, on my left hand. And I also have crystal anklets that I wear that are on my left foot. One of those on my left foot is a selenite crystal anklet. And selenite, for example, so that's this one right here. Selenite is a crystal that's really, really good for cleansing energy. Now, this one is a, uh, a pyramid. I'm sorry, this is a tower. This is a selenite tower. And I love having selenite towers uh, next to on my bedside table. So that way I can always make sure as I am getting into my bed, getting ready to go to sleep, I'm getting into my bed being um, cleansed of any negative energy that I may have brought with me. These are also really, really good to have by, for example, your front door when you're first coming in. So that way when you're coming in, it's also cleansing your energy. Now, another reason selenite is such a great crystal is they say that these do not need to be cleansed. I personally do still clean them. I'll clean my crystals, all of them, which is many, but I will uh, typically clean them about once a month. And I like to clean them just prior to any new moon because then what you can also do is you can place them out in the moonlight of a new moon, which will charge and infuse your crystals with the positive potential of going into a new moon phase. Okay, now another interesting thing about selenite that I love them is you can get some selenite chargers just like this and you can put your jewelry onto the selenite chargers if you wear crystal jewelry or if, for example, you want to meditate with any sort of a crystal and when you put it on a selenite charger, it will charge up whatever crystal is on it. So look at it. Um, the selenite charger is kind of like putting gas in your car. You, sure, if you're kind of running on empty, you can still get around, but it's always gonna be something in the back of your mind where it's like, I gotta stop, I gotta get gas. Versus I've just filled up my tank and I know no matter where I need to go, whatever errands I have to run, I'm covered. So that is very much the purpose in charging things on a selenite charger. And again, they will tell you that they do not need to be cleansed. I would still, I personally do clean them. They're also delicate. So if you don't necessarily wanna wash them with salt, which we'll talk about uh, more towards the end, but if you don't wanna wash them with salt, you can just um, sage them. That's another great way of cleansing them. Um, I'm personally a little, I guess, laissez-faire about it and I will clean them with salt, but that's just me, okay? So that's selenite, really, really great cleansing crystal. And that is also why I wear it as an anklet on my left foot. So that way I'm making sure that whatever energy I'm bringing from wherever I'm going, it's going to be a cleansed energy. Here, I'll actually just pull it off and show it to you. So this is the selenite anklet that I wear, okay? And again, it's for the purposes of making sure all of the energy that I'm absorbing through my body in the process of wherever I am going um, is going to be a cleansed energy. And I've kind of talked about this before, you know, there's energy tags that are all around us and we're constantly accumulating energy tags. It's just like, imagine, you know, you're going out and about in your day-to-day -day life wearing shoes. When you come home, you're always going to have mm, stuff on the bottom of your shoe because we're stepping, we're always walking around places. So just like we're gonna be bringing back, you know, different bacterias and soils from wherever it is that we're going, imagine those are energy tags that we're also bringing back with us. So that's actually gonna lead me to the next thing that I love having in my home, which is not actually even a crystal. I love it nonetheless. And this is Himalayan sea salt. Now I got a bag of these 
a chunk, like about this size chunk, a bag of these, about maybe yay big, on Amazon for $12. Um, and I absolutely love these. And the reason that I love them is, first of all, Himalayan sea salt is one hell of a cleanser. So I, first of all, as you know, if you've seen my videos, you can look behind me. I always have my um, Himalayan sea salt lamp on. I also have them in every single room in my apartment because they are fabulous at, first of all, cleansing the air. They are detoxifying. They give such a great glow, especially at night. They're great night lights, but they're also just great for cleansing the overall energy. So I have chunks like this where my shoes are. Um, I have chunks like this in every room as well, in the corner near the windows, because that is going to make sure that whatever energy is coming in is going to get cleansed. Now, interestingly, salt in general is a fantastic cleanser. And if you have, for example, had a lot of people over in your apartment, and even after you've saged, you can still kind of feel like, it might feel a little bit sticky or heavy or dense with other people's energy, something that you can actually do. You can do this with any salt. It doesn't just have to be Himalayan sea salt, but what you can do is take salt and you can sprinkle it on your floors and you can leave them on there for about an hour and after an hour, clean it up. So I would not necessarily advise putting it on carpets, but definitely if you have hardwood floors, you can sprinkle them on the hard hardwood floors, leave it for an hour, sweep it up. What I will also just tell you to do is not to put that into your general garbage, but sweep it up, put it into like a, maybe like a shopping bag from a store and then take that directly outside because then you're gonna be sweeping up all of the energy tags and you're going to be condensing it and putting it into your garbage can. And if the purpose is in cleansing the energy out of your space and out of your home, then do exactly that. Clear it out and get that energy out of your home. So yes, these are fantastic. And I'm also gonna say this now, first of all, I'm not an affiliate. I do not make money on anything that I am suggesting. Um, I'm not even gonna put like links to the specific places that I have bought my crystals um, because I, I mean, they're from all over the place anyway. But it's just to say like, if I'm sharing something, it's because I myself use it and know how it feels energetically and that's the only reason that I'm recommending it. It's not like I'm making any money on recommending these particular items, okay? But yeah, you can just go to Amazon, you can look for um, Himalayan sea salt chunks and you can order it, okay? So love this guy, really, really, really great. You can put it on the windowsills, uh, put it by your shoes, you can put it everywhere. This, I mean, it's like Windex. It basically does everything energetically and just clears the energy, okay? Now, another one that I really love is pyrite. And pyrite is a crystal that's very, very good for enhancing a good mood. So these are just, first of all, beautiful to look at. If somebody is working in a very heavy or dense um, work atmosphere, you might want to definitely get one of these to keep around you. Um, you can get a raw chunk like that, and you can also get a polished one. This is one of the ones that I wear as well, okay? So you can also get a polished one. Those are really great for enhancing and lifting a mood. Um, some other ones that I'm really going to give a shout out to, let's talk about uh, clear quartz. So clear quartz is kind of just like a great all around crystal. It's like your basic, um, I don't wanna say basic bitch, but it's kind of like your basic bitch, all star, all around good crystal. Um, if you wanna wear it, it's great to wear because it kind of matches with everything. It's not gonna conflict with a particular outfit or color or style. It's also really, really great for healing. Um, and I actually have a, and I didn't bring it and put it here, but I actually have a uh, clear quartz egg about maybe that big and I keep it next to my bed. So I'm getting healing vibes um, next to my bed while I am sleeping. And another good thing to have uh, for sleeping is um, anything with copper. So this is a copper disc um, and I really, really like this. I actually sleep with it under my pillow. 
Um, this is really great. Anything copper related is really, really great for healing. So you can get a copper disc like this. They also, um, and I don't, I don't actually have any right now, but you can get a copper disc about this size. Um, not a disc, I'm sorry. You can get a copper like crystal like this. Uh, about this size and you can also like put those under your pillow or if you're going in for a particular procedure um, and you want to make sure that you're going to be energetically protected you can take that with you as well now speaking about protection um, here are some great ones to dispel negative energies around you um, and what was actually shown to me was when i was meditating about this which i thought was really really interesting is that actually the darker a crystal is, the more dark mm, energy that it can actually take on. And the lighter something is, the less degree that it can actually take on. So anything that's black, for example, is really, really great for absorbing negative energies. So if, I don't know, here's an example, you're driving through a questionable neighborhood, for example, and you're not feeling comfortable or let's say you're just driving around a lot in general, you can always have a black tourmaline crystal in your car and that will absorb the negative energies that are around you. You can also, for example, if you're living in a building and I don't know, maybe you're walking around, you're walking through the hallways to get to your apartment, you can also definitely have one of these at your front door in addition to perhaps having like a selenite one, okay? I also love putting black tourmaline on my uh, my internet router. Um, and if I had any sort of a, like if I had a, a toaster oven or something, um, sorry, a microwave oven, I would put this on a microwave oven as well. Um, again, because it's uh, going to help absorb any heavy vibrations or heavy dense energies. And of course we know EMF is for sure very, very heavy and dense. So this is definitely gonna help mitigate it. And I'm actually gonna even share with you that when I take my black tourmaline off of my router to wash it, I feel a difference. Like I literally can feel the difference in the energy around my router when the crystal is on it versus when it's not on it. So I definitely am a big believer and supporter of these. And actually for many, many years, I wore a pendant of a, uh, I don't think it was black tourmaline. I actually think it was, what was it, black? It'll come to me. Um, but I actually wore one for many, many years and definitely felt protected when I was wearing it. Here is something interesting that I just wanna share about um, wearing crystals, which is if you are wearing one, so for example, one of my, um, bracelets that I wear on my left wrist had broken last week and for a minute I was like oh I wonder if I can like make it out to the store to get another one and then I remembered no if you are ever wearing a pendant and it breaks and you lose it or even if it breaks but you don't lose it that is the crystal's way of letting you know you no longer need the energetic properties that it infuses to you so if something ever breaks when you're wearing it you don't necessarily have to go out and replace it unless you really, really like it. So I wear a jade ring now and last week the stone actually fell out. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if this is the universe's way of telling me I don't need the good luck that it's going to bring to me. But then I realized I really, really like wearing a jade ring. I love it. It's it's just beautiful and it makes me feel good. So whether or not I feel I need it, I still love it. And yes, I do wear it on my right hand because I want all of the actions that I am taking and everything that I do to be one that is, um, one could say, fortuitous or with good luck. So it's not so much that I felt I needed to bring it in, which is why it's not on my left hand, but it's that everything that I do, I want everything, every action that I take to be one that is divinely guided and divinely protected with luck. So that's why it's on my right hand. And also, even though I don't wear any crystal bracelets on my right hand, when I am actually, I got to reach back to my tray back here. 
when I am actually in a session with um, any of my clients, in my right hand, I will make sure that I am holding a rose quartz, right? So rose quartz, for anyone who is curious about this or doesn't know, this is a great one for self-love. And in, I feel when we are loving ourselves to the optim, optimum level that we can love ourselves, that gives us actually more space and capacity to love others. So I want to make sure that I am in a session, when I am in a session, I can be in the highest vibration of love that I can possibly be in. So that way, when I am working with somebody, I can then um, share with them some of that love as well. Okay, so this is a great one for anyone who is struggling with uh, self-love or acceptance. This is something that's also really nice to wear as a pendant because it's close to your heart. So rose quartz is definitely a beautiful one, beautiful energy to work with. Now, another one for protection is smoky quartz. Um, I love smoky quartz. So it's kind of like, um, depending on how smoky it is, it can either be a grayish or brownish color because quartz actually has a number of different a uh, number of different colors. It's not just clear quartz, right? So this is also a great one for dispelling negative energy. Um, another lovely one to have in your car or to wear on your body as well. Smoky quartz is a good one. And something that I thought was really, really interesting, which was the degree in which a crystal is actually dark will determine the amount of actual negative energy that it can take on. One that is, and I'm obviously not going to go through every single crystal under the sun. There's just too many of them. I was allowing myself to kind of be guided to um, mention specific ones. And those are the ones that I took out. But one of the ones that I was actually directed to kind of talk about is Labradorite. And an interesting thing about Labradorite is that it's, it's dark. So here's this one. I'll also show you this one. This is a palm one. Labradorite has beautiful, I'm not sure if it's, yeah, here, here you can see it. It has beautiful flashes of like blue and green in it, but it's also quite dark. And I was like, hmm, well, that's kind of interesting. See that beautiful sheen that it has? Well, that's kind of interesting because it's dark, but they also say that Labradorite is a crystal that is mm, helping us most align with let's say perhaps our crown chakra and allowing us to uh, connect to the divine um, realm as well. So how can that be if it's dark? And what was actually shown to me specifically about Labradorite is that this is actually allowing us to transmute our own inner darkness, which will therefore raise our vibration. And in the process of raising our vibration and transmuting our own inner, inner darkness will allow us to then connect to the divine. So I think that this is a really, really beautiful, now that I have looked into it and I've, I've kind of seen that, I think this is a really, really beautiful crystal for anybody that is looking to, for exactly that, transmute their own inner darkness so that they are ready to raise their vibration and connect to the realm of the divine. So another really great one, okay? Um, another one that I am definitely a big fan of is hematite. Hematite, not sure if you can see the color here, but hematite is um, actually gray and it has a sheen to it. Um, and maybe mine, my, maybe it has a sheen because mine is polished and it's not raw. But this is a absolutely fabulous one. If you're in any sort of an environment where you're starting to feel dysregulated or you're feeling like you're out of your body, this is super, super powerful. This is um, anyone who has um, is scared of perhaps flying. This is a great one to have. Of course, you always want to make sure that you're holding it in your left hand so that you, you are absorbing. Actually, I don't want to hold it on my left. I find this to be super powerful, so I don't even want to hold it on my left hand right now. Um, but this is a really, really great one if you are having like a panic attack, for example, if you have a fear of flying, a fear of heights, anything like that. This is a fantastic one to have for any such purpose like that. So hematite, okay? Let's see what else. Amethyst. Love me a good amethyst. 
And what's also so interesting about Amethyst is that this is probably, I would say in all of the sessions that I have done, it's come up and I would say 75% of the sessions, that this is a, a great one for anybody that is looking to bring on more of their gifts and abilities to have this on their bedside table while they are sleeping. So Amethyst is a great one, okay? You can have it on your bedside table, you can wear it. Um, this is also, I would say, probably a very good one if you're meditating <clears throat> and you're in meditation, you're seeking specific guidance or specific answers to questions that you may have. This is a really, really nice one for meditative purposes. Um, I find it to be a little bit too strong to wear, um, but that's personally me. Part of the process in building out your crystal collection is discovering which are the ones that feel right for you. And I'll actually talk a little bit about that. If you don't have like a local crystal store that you can go into where you can hold them in your left hand to feel the energy that it's bringing on, how would you necessarily know the ones that are right for you? Because sure, you can get, for example, the, the crystal Bible, which, let me bring it over here. I actually have it back here. You can get the crystal Bible if you want. And <laughs> I was prepared, but not that prepared clearly. So yeah, you can get the crystal Bible and you can flip through it and you can see, and there's, again, there's two additions to this, but you can like flip through it and you can see like, what are the, like, what sounds like it's going to resonate with me? Sure, you can do that. I'm a bit of a, I guess, crystal purist, one can say, which is I would much rather hold it and feel the energy of it. So, but here's the thing. Let's say you don't have a crystal store local that you can do that with. What do you do? Another uh, thing that I actually love to do, and this is a hack if you're feeling energetically a little bit low, <sighs> go to Etsy and put in crystals in Etsy. It is the easiest, cheapest, because it's free, but the easiest and cheapest way to actually just, it's kind of like a hit but it's like a crystal hit. It's not like a drug hit. Um, because as you're just looking through all of the different crystals, if you're very, very sensitive, you will feel the energy of the crystal through the screen. So you can just put in crystals, you can start to scan through all of the different pages, see what's available, and you will feel which ones are resonating with you. And you can allow yourself to be guided that way by what you are feeling versus just picking up a book and reading about it. Which again, you can still always, this is just a great resource as a whole. Um, I really, really actually enjoy having it. I enjoy <laughs> reading about crystals. I guess I'm just like a crystal geek, but I mean, it's a great re resource to have in any event, or it's a great resource to have if you have a lot of crystals and you actually just don't even remember the names of them and you don't even remember the properties of what they supposedly will mm, resonate with, then this is just another great resource to have as well. Okay, let's see if there is anything. Oh, here's another one that I would like to talk about, which is <clears throat> citrine. So first of all, citrine is said to be a crystal that promotes uh, abundance, which I think is lovely. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's lovely and it's beautiful. Um, I don't know that I can specifically speak to that, um, but I can definitely tell you that I find this to be a very happy crystal. So just like I would, for example, want to have pyrite because this, this will increase a happy mood, there is just something to me about citrine that makes me feel very, very happy. And, and maybe it's because it's citrine and it's the color. And they actually did a study a few years ago where they said people who would... Um, <laughs> This is a weird one. I'm not suggesting you sniff like oranges, but people who would actually um, like wear a fragrance with oranges in it, an orange fragrance, actually reported a happier overall mood. So maybe it's the, co the connection that I have to that study that I had read about years ago. I don't know. But this definitely feels like a very, very happy crystal to me. Um, you can, of course, have it in your office if you want. You want to bring abundance there. You can have it at home, at your desk, wherever, if it resonates with you. 
Now, I actually have an interesting story about this particular crystal, which is, do you remember I was saying before, if you have a crystal and it falls off, it's kind of like the crystal's way of saying, you don't need my vibration any longer. So for years, I actually had a citrine pendant that I would wear around my neck. Years, I probably wore it for well over two years. And one day uh, I was at a conference with probably like over a hundred people there and the crystal fell off. I didn't even go looking for it. I said, this is divine. This is the universe's way of letting me know that I no longer need it. And this was a conference, um, like a, a self betterment kind of conference that one would go to. Um, and what was so interesting was the person that had actually, and this was where people were getting up and we're talking and we're connecting, we're supporting one another. And the person that actually found my crystal, um, I had known from speaking with her the day before that she felt like she struggled with trusting that the universe was going to protect her and was going to take care of her. So when she actually found it and she got up and she's like, I have this, you know, I found this crystal pendant. I don't know who it belongs to. I went to talk to her after the break and I was like, there is a reason I lost it. And there's a reason that you found it because I no longer need what this crystal is going to offer, but I think that you do, because this is a crystal that's all about abundance. And I thought that that was just a really beautiful example of um, synchronicity. So yeah, if oh, and here's a wild thing. I found this crystal like a block away from my apartment. I was walking, this was on the sidewalk, and I was like, Ooh, what the heck this is a massive citrine crystal like where so i'm like looking around did anyone lose it and then i was just like i guess the universe is telling me i need this in my life again so i got home and i cleansed it and now it's part of my crystal repertoire which is actually going to lead us to our next point which is for anyone who wants to know how do you cleanse your crystals here's how um <laughs> salt and water and you can give them a salt and water bath or you can actually just cleanse them with your hands with salt so if you want to give them a salt and water bath what you would do you don't have to actually do it in your excuse me your bath unless maybe you have like thousands of crystals you can probably just you know um, plug up the sink and fill it with warm water and pour soak in it uh, soap pour, ah, pour salt in it um, and let it sit there and let it soak for about five to 10 minutes. Take it out and rinse it. You've just given your crystals a salt bath. Similarly, what you can also do to cleanse them is, um, so I prefer this sea salt that I actually get in Trader Joe's, but you can get from wherever. So I, I like it because it's first of all really, really big and it lasts a long time, but I'll just pour some of the salt into my hand. I'll take the crystal and I have the water um, on and I'll just kind of go like back and forth in my hands with the salt and the water. And then once all the salt has kind of like ran through my hands and ran through my fingers and has fallen to the sink itself, I will rinse this. I will leave it on a paper towel. I will do that for all my crystals. I will call it a day. So that's a really, really nice way of actually cleansing them. Uh, another way of cleaning them is to use sage. You can sage them. I guess I'm a little bit more of a, like I like the physical act of doing it with my hands because then I really, really can say like, I feel like they're really, really clean versus just doing it with the sage. So it's kind of, I think a matter of preference. I've also um, uh, read that people will actually leave them outside in nature overnight. I have personally not tried that. Um, if you have, please comment down below and let me know if you feel like that's uh, kind of worked energetically. And another thing is, I have heard that people will do it in the regular moonlight to cleanse it as well. But for me personally, I do, again, I don't do that. I like the physical act of washing it with my hands and salt. But again, if I want to charge it, that's when I will actually leave it in a window that gets a lot of natural, like moonlight coming into it. And again, I would typically do that on a new moon. 
So going into the new month, the new lunar cycle, which is ripe and full with potential. So really charging the crystals with that new energy. Okay, that's personally what I would do. Let's see if there's any other ones I wanna touch upon. I don't think so. Here's something else. Um, so this is something, uh, again, I, I actually buy almost all my crystals on Etsy. This is something that I bought on um, Etsy as well. This is something um, that I put on, for example, my TV. I keep it next to my computer. And yes, I also put one of these on my router. Um, and this, I forgot everything that's in it, but it has, uh, first of all, a copper coil, which takes the energy and it transmutes it. It also has selenite crystal chips in it, and it also has copper in it. And then it has um, two other things, which I can't remember for the life of me that they are, but there is like lots of things like this that you can get and that you can put next to um, any electronic devices. Um, you can also get like a pyramid. Let me get my pyramid. I think you guys can actually see it, but I'll get my pyramid from over here. So pyramids, um, they say, are also really great for taking heavy, dense energy and transmuting it. There are so many different kinds of pyramids that you can get. Um, some of them, some people make the pyramids with the, again, the copper spiral. Um, I got this one because it has a uh, just beautiful energy to it. I could feel the energy like through the screen as I was like even looking at it. Um, so again, this has selenite, this has copper, this has the other chips in it as well. Whatever those silver chips are, you can also see the copper in it. Um, and then it has, a, I forget what these blue crystals are here, but so this is really supposed to be great for like promoting um, creativity. And this is, you know, obviously my desk where I'm um, recording. So I always like to have this nearby. Um, do I feel like it works? I think they all work to some extent. Would I like specifically call this one out and be like, yes, this I feel has been the greatest contribution. I think they all work in concert with one another. So I think that whatever resonates with you is resonating with you because it's something that's going to be favorable energy for you. So yes, I definitely like having this um, on my desk. And again, you can see it has lots and lots of selenite in it. You can tell selenite is one of my favorites. But again, I want all of the energy in my creative space to be a cleansed and purified kind of energy. Okay. Let me see if there's any other ones that are calling out right now and they're like, Faye, pick me, pick me. No, none of the, none of the other ones are talking. Um, so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, uh, the first of hopefully many Sunday specials. And I would love to hear some of the topics you would like me to discuss on Sunday specials. So if you have some ideas of topics you'd like, please go ahead, comment down below. Um, if you've also made it this far, please, I would love it if you would uh, like this video. It helps with the um, analytics and getting more people to see it. Um, if you're new here, please go ahead and follow, give a follow to my station and thank you for all of your support guys. I truly appreciate all of it. And as always, until next time, stay in the high vibration with or without the assistance of your crystals.